Hey guys, here we are today with a um, small little kit I, I make. Um, it's for a trackside or a small flat car tank. Um, what I've done is I've cast this in hydrocal and it makes a good addition to your, um, like, like a trackside detail or like I said, I've even made, a, I made this flat car for it to go on for a little uh, backwoods train that I do. But anyway, um, I've got a couple here that I, that I had that didn't cast quite right, so I'm going to show you how I go about painting it really, really quickly. Anyway, the kit comes with the um, cast um, tank. It's solid piece of um, hydrocal. Makes it um, makes it affordable for everybody instead because I couldn't cast it in uh, resin solid. It just it just be way too expensive. Anyway, it comes with the the cast tank. It comes for the water hatch, the water hatch lid. And it comes with two different um, spigots. I know there's um, there's some really nicely detailed white metal ones out there, but I'm just casting these in resin and with what I have available, this is what works for me. Um, you can cast them in, um, uh, I cast them in resin. It comes with a, a handle and then each of the spigots. And you can put them in the um, end like that. I hope you can see it. Or you can drill a hole and if it's on a tank car, you can put it in the side and you can use either one you want. You know, if you had this up really high, uh, up on a stand or something, you may could use the one that had the downspout in it. Anyway, okay. So uh, these are um, set for a five, I believe it's a five thirty, yeah, five thirty seconds drill bit. Um, a, a good drill bit will drill right in here without any problems. I, I just drilled that by hand, didn't have any problems, and it goes. Uh, you can fit that right in, and once you figure out where you want, you can glue it in place. Um, but anyway, I start with the cast piece here. Um, what I do is where the sides are rounded, we're going to start showing you how to put it together. Where the sides are rounded, it's th almost exactly three inches across. So I come in the middle, make a line at, down the center, so it's about an inch and a half each side. And then you can put the water hatch wherever you want. I mean, whatever uh, makes looks good for you. Um, I, on that line, uh, then there are their rivet detail on each side. So I just pick pick the ones across from each other and glue it in place. I use a um, just regular CA glue. Okay, the water hatch lid, it will come with a piece of brass already in it for the handle. And uh, once you're done, that, that just fits right in place. So that that can be, uh, it's just, it just fits right on top. Okay, so um, once you get it to this point, you need to decide whether, if it's indoor, we can just go ahead and prime it and paint it with acrylic paints. Um, if you're planning on doing it, using it outdoor, um, <clears throat> I would first uh, get a good uh, polyurethane, um, and you can use clear satin or whatever. Just get your, you'll need to paint the whole thing, paint it, let it dry, then turn it over and paint the other side. You need to get at least two coats on there so it'll last longer. Hydrocal is not going to last forever if you leave it out in the weather and it rains on it daily for six weeks straight. It's, it, it will, it, it'll, the polyurethane will help it um, last longer, but uh, hydrocal is not going to last forever outside. But anyway, um, once you get all the parts put on and you get it uh, ready to paint, um, it, you can, if you've got the pure polyurethane on, you can go from this point and uh, continue on. Um, what I do is I use a uh, Rust-Oleum. I always I just use a self-etching primer primer because I have it on hand because I use it on all my plastics. Um, I, I, it's it's like a gray green, and I just prime the whole thing. And you I didn't prime the bottom on this because it's an example. So I've got the whole thing primed, and then uh, <clears throat> I would I would paint my uh, hatch lid separate. Once we get the whole thing primed, and we need to let it dry a good four to six hours before you start painting it, I take and I use um, a nice soft brush. These are the, um, I get them at Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of six. They make some really nice soft brushes for $5.99, and if you get 40% off coupon, it's like $2 or something, or $3. But um, I get the uh, just a good black, flat um, acrylic paint. One's, this was uh, Anita's and this is just the um, like the AC Moore store brand. Anyway, either one of them works good. Um, all we're going to do is take this and the soft brush makes this go on really nice and it lays nice and flat. So we're going to go in here and all you're going to do is start 
and just brush it on. You'll brush it out really nice and smooth and make sure that you keep going over it until you get rid of any lines that you see in it. That It's just where your brush goes across and this stuff spreads out pretty far. So um, we want to get the whole thing painted. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and I'm going to finish painting this and then I'll show you how I finish it up. So I'll be right back. Hey guys, here we are back at the uh, at the water tank. I, I've got I've got it painted black. It's funny. I, the second time I'm shooting this part because the first time I did it, I was showing you how I was painting it, and I could see nothing but my hand. So I'm gonna try to do better this time. Anyway, what I'm gonna do but now is I'm just gonna go back and we'll just try to weather a little bit, give it a little bit of uh, rust color to it. Um, being that I painted it black, now you can paint them any color you want. I just went with black. Um, try I guess the same just black was just a good generic color for it. I don't know if there was any other tanks out there of a different color or not, but anyway. So I went with the generic black. Um, what I'm gonna do is go back and just add a little bit, uh, what, what, just a little bit of rust and then, and then go back and add some dust to it. Anyway, uh, what I do, and there's a lot of people out there that's a lot better at this than I am, but um, I'm just piddling around. Uh, I just take, I got these brushes at uh, AC Moore or, or Hobby Lobby, it's a Deerfoot style brush. Um, this one's a 5 8 and this one's a, a 3 8 size. I like those for um, adding, uh, you know, uh, adding color to stuff. What I'm going to do now is um, I just use a Burnt Sienna. You can use whichever brand. And um, I just take it, I use a small brush, and I just take it and I load up with, um, load it up with the paint and then I just kind of rake it out. I just want to make sure I got all over the bristles. And that's coming here on the table. I just use my table. And I'll just start dabbing it out. I also usually keep a, um, a towel on, on my pants or here so I can rub, wipe stuff off. Or I will um, you know, take it and clean it off into the, into the towel so we don't ha have such a wet brush, kind of a dry brush. But anyway, what I do now is you can see on this one, I just take around where the water would flow, where it would be, it just start adding a little bit of rust. And you can add it to your taste. And I just kind of go around where it would be, some little bigger areas here where you have it all the time. And then come over to the other side. And then I just, because you know it's a big flat area, you may have a lot of water that um, ends up staying on the top of the tank. So that's the thicker rust or the brighter stuff. Like I said, you can make this as large as you want. Just do it to whatever makes you um, makes you happy with with the outcome of it. Then um, what I do, so I'm just taking the same color and I'm cleaning it back off. And now all we're doing, we've got the, got the rivet detail. We're just going to take it and we'll take this and it's just dry brush. And you're getting most of, um, most of the paint off the brush. And we're just coming back and picking up detail around the edges. Hit the seams. And then I can just really lightly brush it. We're not turning the whole thing um, brown. We're just giving her a good dusting or, or a good uh, highlighting of it. And I still got some on the table here. I just want to, uh, and you may not be able to see this very well, but it's just adding some definition to it. It's adding a, a little bit of a rust color to the whole tank. And by dry brushing, you're not, you're not, um, setting it in there as, as dark as this here. I hope you can see it. As dark as this where I, I really dabbed it in, but I'm just really just rubbing it in and uh, kind of dulling the uh, black and adding just a tad of a rust color to it. And I've, I hadn't added, I've hardly used any paint. I just used one paintbrush full that's, that I have taken most of it off. And then um, 
if you come up here and you mess up and there's something you don't like we're putting this on so thin that all you gotta do is come back with the black and just do the whole thing again just just paint it all black over again and um, start from scratch now I would have generally I would usually have the lid already on there so I could hit it all at one time just just a sample so I'm just not doing that but you can see that I've kind of extended my rust area on top but anyway that's pretty much how I do that now what I would do is I let that dry I'd come back and um, just take some uh, weathering chalks and, and just uh, give you a brush over just to dull it out even more uh, one thing I do want to show you is the um, is the uh, spouts. Um, we got the. Um, let's see if I can find my thing. Anyway, uh, you you can take these and you can they're, they're the tops of them are really long here. You can take them, sand them off to however long you want. And um, as far as the handles go. Whoops, about dropped it. What I do is I take the handle and these are cast and they're flat across the bottom. And what I do is I take a rat tail file. I can't find my rat tail file. And um, I'll take a rat tail file and I'll kind of go in the grooves and make the definition of the grooves a little bit better. All the way around. Then I take a Dremel tool. I use this little router bit. And I just clean out, you don't go all the way through it, just clean out the base. So it gives you a nice circle there that sets into the, uh, the spigot itself. All right. And that, then those just, you just prime those with the same uh, self etching primer and then uh, just paint it whatever color. Um, anyway, let me go ahead and I'm going to. Um, let this dry for a little bit and we'll go over some um, some powders and then we will um, be finished with it. Okay, here we're back. It's all dried and um, what, I, what I was going to show you real quick is a lot of people like weathering powders. I, 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 have, I like it finished the way I did with just the paints. Um, but I went ahead and all I do, I've got some uh, Rembrandt uh, chalks that I've put into different... Um, these are individual little containers and I'm just going back with like this is also a burnt sienna it's a rust color and um, I just think it puts too much on there but um, I just start working it in and you can work it down now this gives you a really um, heavier rusted look it's not the um, it's not a uh, real abrasive looking rust but um, just gives you that that a lot more rust color on it but anyway you can work this in and um, just as you go I work my way across but anyway I did this side here and what you want to do is just I'm, I've handled a little bit you just want to make sure after you get it all the way you want it it's just to shoot that with a, um, a dull coat a uh, a clear dull coat and to, to seal it in but anyway uh, that just kind of goes over how I put together the tank how I how I painted it how I finished it up um, like I said you want to um, if you're gonna put it outside do do coat it with a polyurethane before you ever do start painting it um, so it'll last longer uh, it makes a neat little old kit for um, adding trackside details or uh, like I said, like a little track side, or like a little small flat car like this one is. Uh, I'm, making, I'm making up a couple of them for my personal uh, layout. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the kit. I hope it goes together good for you. If you ever have any problems, give me a holler. Um, it's from tiesplanes.com. I know uh, Ties Planes, but I do train stuff too. There's a lot of different um, G-scale items on there. Uh, I make a lot of different small castings. I also make like all the, the locomotive boxes here. The, these are cast in hydrocal also, but that one's been painted. So there's a lot of different neat little things on there. Hope you enjoy the kit and um, y'all have a good day.